Hey guys and welcome back to G's Autos. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right, good news. The stereo has all been, well, the sound system has all been fitted uh, into the EB and it sounds really, really good. Um, now, I have to apologize. I was going to do a, um, like a sound check with you guys to, just to give an idea of how it all sounds. Unfortunately, the uh, six stacker CD system um, in the back, in the, which sits in the boot, that actually died as an issue with the laser. So I have taken all that out and it's been sent away to get repaired, which that should be all good. And apart from that, all I had was a really bad um, uh, cassette tape, which was about 35 years old. It was just, it was bad. I only just used it to do a sound check for myself so I could make sure everything was working okay. And I can't turn the radio on because the, uh, I've got that electrical issue with the antenna, which is going to be fixed as well. But anyway, everything went really well. A couple of little issues I ran into, but um, the video is a complete walkthrough of what I did. And look, basically everything turned out really good. So if anyone's looking to do the uh, same thing with theirs, with their Fairmont or um, Fairlane, I suppose, are very similar. Uh, at least you'll get a good idea of um, how it's all done. Now also, at the end of this video, I'm going to run through how much everything cost uh, for all the speakers, the auto electrician, getting the, the, uh, the deck repaired, and um, I'll tell you all about what was actually done to the deck uh, to get it all repaired. Anyway guys, enough out of me. Uh, take a look at the video. I hope you like it. If you enjoyed, give it a thumbs up, and um, keep an eye out for more content on the EB coming up soon, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Okay guys, here are the replacement speakers for the EB. Now the only ones that aren't here are the tweeters. They've already been installed, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Now these are the front door speakers, and these ones here are the rear parcel shelf. They're all Alpine uh, speakers. Now for the subwoofer, this is an Audison. Uh, which apparently is a very good um, swap over from the factory um, subwoofer. Now, during the week, I had the auto electrician come around and put on all new connectors. That way, these speakers will connect directly up to the connectors that are already on the uh, factory wiring harness. And the subwoofer was done as well. All the speakers. Now, the tweeters have been uh, put in. Uh, there was a little bit of an issue with the tweeters, which we'll have a look at now. The problem was, here's one of the original tweeters. It's just a bit wet. It's been sitting outside. Don't need it. Um, these were actually glued in. So when we have a look in the car, there's a metal bracket that these uh, are screwed into. Now, the screws were glued, and there was a small bead of glue around the speaker edge. And, mate, I tell you what, these things were a nightmare to get out. Really, really hard to get out. Um, and plus the wires coming off the, um, the tweeters go straight into the harness. So there were no connectors. So I had the auto electrician put connectors on. So next time, if these ever need to come out, um, nice and easy, same kind of connectors as these ones. So nice and simple, nice and easy to, uh, disconnect next time. All right, guys, what we'll do now, we're going to go and, um, start putting, um, these speakers into the car and we'll run through the process because there are some slight changes and we will need to make some modifications to get these suckers to fit so uh, let's go do that now all right guys so i'm about to uh fit the new front speakers so the original speakers were screwed into these three holes here now the diameter of these new replacement alpine speakers are slightly bigger so they've got a the outside um, line of the speaker is a nice flush fit to that rim along there so I'm actually going to use four screws to hold these in as you can see I've marked them out already I just need to drill them out now I'll sit the speaker in and I'll show you what I mean the new speaker fits nice and snug just inside that factory lip just there so you can see where I've marked out the four holes. Because it is a slightly bigger speaker and it's fairly weighty, I am going to use four holes instead of three like the factory ones. So I'm going to uh, drill those out now and we'll uh, get them screwed in. All right, as you can see, I have drilled out the four holes for the speaker. I used a 3.5 millimeter drill bit, which is close to perfect for the screws. As I, I'm just using the, um, the factory screws. That came with the speakers so that's what I'll be putting in 
Now what I'm going to do is put these, uh, fit this speaker, connect it up, and um, just keep in mind, I don't mean to be Captain Obvious, but when you're using your drill bit, if you haven't done this kind of stuff before, just make sure your drill bit is for metal, as you can get ones for masonry and ones for timber. So just make sure it's for metal. Uh, metal, it will go through nice and easy. All right, let's get this uh, speaker uh, connected and screwed in, and uh, we'll move on to the next step. All right, I've just done a test fit of the speaker. I've put all the screws in just to make sure there was no issues, no obstructions. Everything fits in nice. It's got a nice snug fit. What I'll do now, I'll take those the screws out, take the speaker out. I'll put that um, that plastic um, dust protector back onto the door, put the speaker on, and we should be good to go. All right, as you can see, the plastic sheet has been put back onto the door. The speaker has been screwed back in. Now, I just did another uh, test run with the window, just in increments down and back up again just to make sure nothing was going to snag and everything was A-OK -okay and it's all good. So what I'm going to do now, I'll repeat the process onto the uh, repeat the process on the driver's door and then I can move on to the uh, rear speakers. While I'm working on the uh, driver's door, I thought I'd point something out that you might find helpful or not. Um, because I have installed an aftermarket window regulator in the driver's um, door, you'll see that the design is a little bit different. So where I would normally be able to get a long screw through there, I can't uh, in this case because of the design of the aftermarket uh, regulator. But that's all right because I wasn't 100% happy with the... With the um, the fit of the screws on the uh, passenger door so I am going to get a slightly thicker screw just to get a tighter fit um, for the speaker so I'll duck down the road shortly I'll grab a, a bunch of these and that will do the trick um, so if you're using the factory uh, screws that came with the speakers um, I'd probably go a 3 mil. Uh, drill bit rather than a 3.5 like I did, but um, it's an easy fix if you've got different um, uh, different screws that you've got on hand to use. But anyway, I thought I'd point that out. Uh, anyway, I'll continue on and um, we'll move on to the next bit. All right, guys, let's take a look at these tweeters. Now they're in, um, they're all fitted, they do work. Now the dash extension panel that sits along the top there. That is held in by two Allen key screws, one on this side and one on the other side. Now once they're out, it's just a matter of sliding that piece back. Now keep in mind, you've got the connection there, which is a little pressing clip, and that's for the temperature sensor, okay? So just keep that in mind. It's a little bit of a juggling act, but um, not too bad. Now, the tweeters, they put up a real fight. As I mentioned earlier, the tweeters were actually glued onto that um, onto the bracket, and the four screws on each side that hold the tweeters onto the bracket, they were also glued in as well. And it was a real tough time getting them out. Uh, I couldn't get them out, to be honest. Uh, and the auto electrician, he had one hell of a time getting them out as well. So, but yeah, a bit of an issue. Then we had a, an, an issue with um, one of the tweeters. It wouldn't, um, the backing wouldn't thread on. Uh, and when it did, it got right close to clamping it in place, uh, but it didn't have enough thread on it. So, a bit of an issue there out of the factory. Um, so, a little bit of silicon was used to hold it in place, and that's all good. Now, I will show you. Now, these, the original wires for the tweeters just go straight into the harness. There was no uh, connector. So, I had a connector put on this side and a connector put on the other side. Just so in the future, if these tweeters do need to come out, it's an easy uh, disconnection and the job's done. But um, one thing I'm not too sure about, I don't think the uh, the dash extender is going to clear these. So I might be in a spot of bother here and uh, may need to change the setup. But I'm about to put that on and uh, find out the hard way. Guess what? It fitted. It's sitting up a little bit in the middle there but um, I'll reinvestigate that at a, at a later date 
it just could be out of shape. It's it's been sitting in there for that many years, and then it's not quite the same. Um, it's not quite sitting in the same spot, but it's all good. So that's all buttoned up. The other side's buttoned up, and that's all good. That really surprised me. I wasn't expecting that to fit. Anyway, all right. Moving on to the uh, head unit. As you know, the head unit has been um, fixed. We'll run through what was done to that later, including how much it cost. Now, to get the stereo, uh, the head unit back in. On this um, front cover panel here, there's a Phillips head screw there and a Phillips head screw there. They're just located up in, in there, so they're pretty easy to get to. Uh, now, the head unit just sits on these little rails here. They're the little slides that go over it. And look, normally in here you'd have two star-headed uh, screws, like what's in the door trims. But um, at some stage, my brother has swapped them out for just standard Phillips heads. Uh, all the connectors that attach to the back of the stereo, they're all dedicated connectors. So there, there are none that are two, are two are the same. Doesn't happen. Um, they're all individual. So... You can't get them muddled up or mixed up, so which is really, really good. So I'm going to get that uh, put back in, connect it up, and um, yeah, we'll move on to the next bit. All right, everything, all the connectors um, are attached, and uh, the code has been punched in, and we've got power, which is great. Now I can hear the CD change of power up at the back as well, and so that's all good. So we'll turn that off. All right, I've got the uh, subwoofer bolted in. It's a straight replacement for the factory one. Uh, just sits straight over the top and the and the screws go straight in. No mucking around. Uh, really good, really happy with that. So now I'm going to move on to putting the rear parcel shelf on and uh, getting that fitted and then um, dropping in the two rear speakers. All right, guys, the uh, rear speakers are in. The subwoofer is sitting under the uh, rear parcel shelf nicely. Now, with putting the uh, rear speakers in, these adapter plates came in really handy. So basically, you just remove all of these outside um, tabs. You don't need them. That one there as well, you don't need them. Um, use these inner holes that you see along here. Spin it around till you line up uh, with your factory, with your three factory holes. Uh, lines up perfectly, screw them in, uh, you get little clips at the back so it tightens up and um, once that's in, put your speaker sitting on top and four little screws at which they supply go into there and it fits in nice and neat. Now unfortunately, the factory grills don't fit. Um, so I will have to source some uh, grills to go over them but that's no biggie, that's, um, yeah, That'll be easy enough. So all I've got to do now is connect them up and um, happy days, we can turn it on and uh, take it for a test run. All right, guys, it's the next day and I'm just fine tuning a couple of things. Now, ignore what I said previously about using the, the screws that came with the speakers and including the, um, the little speed clips there. Um, they're no good. They're no good for this application because of the lip on the speaker just around there. So what I've done, I've gone and grabbed a little pack of these suckers. So they've got a little hex head. And um, I'm, I've just done one speaker and I'm using these to replace. So that way I can still use, oops, I can still use the factory clips on the bottom little bit more surface area, clamp up underneath and get a nice tight fit. So that's what I've just done to this speaker, all happy days. And I'm just about to do the same to that speaker there. Now these little screws that I picked up, they are these ones here. And they fit perfectly. So um, yeah, ignore what I said earlier. All right, I'm gonna get this, um, this last speaker buttoned up. I have done a sound test, um, everything's working okay. A minor issue that I'll need to get looked at, but uh, once I get this in, we can uh, take a look, we'll have a listen, and um, I'll run through how much everything has cost. You're still here. That's fantastic, you stuck around. All right, let's go through some um, costs. 
All right, so the subwoofer, uh, the Audison 8 inch subwoofer, that was $249, okay? Now the, the front speakers, which were the front door speakers and the tweeters, they come as a pack. Uh, that was, they're normally $249, I paid $240. And for the rear speakers, I'm not too sure what they normally go for, but I did pick them up on special for $120. Now the um, the deck, let's run through what was done to the to the head unit. Alright, repairs. Uh, LCD not working. Um, the unit was, uh, the deck was dead on the bench. Uh, dismantle unit, trace and replace leaking capacitors on printed circuit board, uh, repair PCB corrosion, replace lamps for display, uh, what else was there, replace cassette belts and relube seized mechanism, reassemble, check and test on bench, that came to a grand total of $363, and the last bit on the list was the auto electrician, which I, I paid a little bit more than what I was expecting, to be honest, uh, I paid $314, uh, for that visit was a mobile um, auto electric that came around, but anyway, it's all in it's all good um, The only cost I don't have is for the repair on the CD player uh, The six stacker sorry, um, but I'll probably get that in a week or two But anyway based on these numbers. I've just given you a grand total of And the sound system sounds absolutely fantastic Anyway, guys, thanks for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed the video. And like I said earlier, I'll see you guys on the next one. Uh, I've got some suspension um, going into the EB soon too, so keep an eye out for that one. Thanks, guys.